All right, welcome back into OTB. As we all know, SEC championship game this weekend against the Georgia Bulldogs. Now, if you would have won the game last week against Texas A&M, a lot of us probably would have felt different about this game, but it shouldn't take away from the opportunity in this game. Is it a tall task? Yes, it was going to be a tall task even if you beat Texas A&M. Now, the spread's like 17 and a half. It's kind of where it's resting right now. It was about 15, 15 and a half before you lost to Texas A&M. So it's changed it just a little bit, but you were stu- uh, still a two-touchdown underdog. And when you look at Georgia, they're 12-0, and 0, as we all know. They're 8-0 and 0 in conference play. They are the defending national champion. When you look at Stetson Bennett, he's been highly efficient. He's thrown for over 3,000 yards this year, 16 touchdowns. We know what they do on the ground. They have multiple running backs are going to roll them in there. Whichever one typically has the hot hand gets the most carries in a game. They are a team that's physical. They are a team that is a little bit old school offensively and defensively. Now more defensively because of the physicality that they play with, they still will go out there and they will hit you in the mouth. That's why they are the top defense in the country. Points allowed, 11.3 points per game, which is best in the country. Yards allowed, they are fourth in the country, only giving up 270 yards per game. And so they are the team that you thought they would be coming into the season, which is pretty remarkable considering that they only have three defensive starters returning, seven on offense. So 10 only total starters, one of the lower as far as coming back teams and units in the entire SEC. We tell you all the time, they didn't take a player out of the transfer portal. The only power five team not to do so because they believed in their recruiting and it's showing that they were exactly right. So this is going to be a tall task. You have to find ways to attack this team. Now, before the A&M game, I would have told you that I actually liked this matchup more than maybe some of the other matchups. Not because I didn't believe in Georgia. I just thought that their pro-style offense, I thought maybe the way that they played would give you a little bit of a chance maybe to get to some edges, maybe to have some athletes in space because – Look, we saw the matchup against Tennessee, and obviously that was not a good matchup for LSU. But now this Texas A&M film has kind of told me a little bit of, of a different story. And it's not that you got bullied as much as I thought before I turned on the tape. Because I'll be honest with you, watching it on TV, I'm like, I think the front seven might have got bullied a little bit. Because you saw A-Chain run for well over 200 yards. Now, they didn't tackle great. Make no mistake about it. It was the worst tackling game that LSU's had this year. They had 19 missed tackles. They had 19 missed tackles. That was not something that we have really seen from them. Certainly not at that level that many times in the game. You might have seen it a series here, a series there, but certainly not over the full 60 minutes. And so that was a problem. But it wasn't, again, I thought the push would be there. When you turn on the tape, Makai Wingo actually played his style of game. I mean, he graded out high. He actually held points. I thought Jacob and Guillory, who only played a couple of snaps, so I'll say a couple. I mean, he played more than he's been getting, but he didn't play a bulk of the game. I felt like he held his own when he was in there. It's not good when your voice is going out and you don't have a co-host to like fill time. Uh, Greg Penn actually continued to play some of his better football. Again, the missed tackles were the issue. It wasn't necessarily the push. But here's the thing that I did see that is concerning. You saw a different style of offense. Now, we have clowned Texas A&M. We have clowned Jimbo Fisher for this style of offense, and it should have been clowned. I mean, it's bad. It's not good. They have to make changes there. But it gave you issues because you haven't seen it, and you haven't seen it really at all this season. And what I'm talking about is they were in 12 personnel. They were in 21 personnel. They were in 22 personnel. They went old school, which is why we clown their offense. They played a fullback a ton in this game. You go back, you watch the tape. I mean, they had a fullback. They condensed everything. Everything was in tight spaces. They were in I formation, and you were not gap sound. Your gap integrity was all over the place. And it's something that LSU's actually been incredibly good at this year, facing off against rushing attacks like Ole Miss, like Arkansas, some of the higher-powered rushing, even against UAB. I realize what UAB is, but UAB had a running back that ran for over 100 yards in every contest coming into Baton Rouge. And so they at least had a guy that you had to prepare for. You had to make sure that you had gap integrity. You didn't have it in this game. 
And it was the most surprising thing. And I'm talking about really anyone on the front seven. Over-pursuing, not pursuing enough, giving yourself up, um, giving the running back really a two-way go multiple times. And we'll see if we can pull some of the clips. I know we're a little restricted in what we can show, certainly from the end zone copy, but watching the coaches tape, watching the All-22, watching the end zone copy, it tells a big story. If you do that against Georgia, you're going to get beat, and you're going to get beat by that spread. Like This is a team that is going to take advantage of everything that you give them like that, certainly more than a bad Texas A&M team that was 4-7 and seven coming into the game. You have, to, you have to fix that. You have to clean that up. Like the missed tackle stuff, like 19 missed tackles, that's the obvious one. Like you can't do that. You do that against almost any team. Again, a bad Texas A&M team, you're going to get beat. But the gap integrity stuff is the stuff that makes me maybe the most nervous in this contest. Well, can Stetson Bennett hit a play? Absolutely. I mean, he's been disrespected his entire career. you got to give him some credit. He is a quarterback that does exactly what that offense wants and needs him to do. But they have three or four running backs, depending on how many play in this game. Like McIntosh, Edwards, Milton, certainly going to play in this one. They will hit home runs. Just last week against Georgia Tech, I mean, 45 yards, uh, 28 yards, 44 yards, they hit the big hitters. And if you over-pursue, if you're not in your gap, that's something that Georgia can certainly take advantage of offensively. And then when you look at Georgia defensively, we know what they are. They're a team that's going to get after the quarterback. They're a team that is going to try to be more physical than you. A lot of times they are the more physical football team. They've gone down an edge rusher in the middle portion of the year. You wondered, is it going to affect them? It didn't affect them at all because the same position went down a year ago. The same player stepped in for the guy that went down and then went back to the bench, didn't transfer, didn't put himself in the portal, waited his time. Now Nolan Smith goes out and he's right back in there because that's the culture that they've built there. So there's challenges. Is it a game that you have absolutely 0% chance to win? No, not at all. You have too many players. You have too many athletes. You've played too good a football for me to believe that. But you've got to play your best game. You've got to play your smartest game. You've got to play your hardest game. You have to do all of those things when you're in a matchup like this. That's just the way it is. I'm not saying that it is not a winnable game. It is a winnable game. But if you give them extra opportunities, like you've given some other teams this year, you won't have the ability to come back. Like you gave Florida State opportunities. Well, you had the talent to be able to come back in that game, have a chance, last play of the game in that one. Auburn, same thing. You gave them opportunities. They took advantage, but you were good enough, better than them, talent-wise, scheme-wise, to come back and win that game. Uh, the Florida game a little bit. Mississippi State certainly 13 to nothing. Ole Miss even. is a good football team, not a great football team like this Georgia team is. And so for me, yes, we'll get into some of the keys and we'll do it here in a couple of minutes whenever Randy McMichael joins us. You have to do everything right. Not just the big things, the little things. And you can't revert to some of the things that I saw on tape that we all saw on tape a week ago. Like offensively, You've got to get back to who you were during the Alabama, during the Ole Miss, UAB, during that run. You were, you were a fearless offense. Now, you didn't play reckless, but you were fearless. And there's a big difference in that. You took chances because you believed in the scheme, you trusted in the scheme, you trusted in your players. Like, when's the last time you turned on an LSU-Alabama tape and you saw an offense play free outside of 2019? A long time. But they played free because they believed in the scheme. They believed in what was going on. They believed in each other, right? Then you turn on the Arkansas tape, and you're holding on to the football a little bit. Uh, receivers aren't getting open, right? Offensive line not doing what they're supposed to be doing. You have six, seven sacks in that contest. Can't be that. It's got to be free. It's got to be precise. It can't be reckless, but it's got to be an offense that wants to make plays and take chances because they believe that they're there, not because they are forcing them. And so it's a tall task. I, I don't want to sugarcoat it. You know that already. But if you play your game, if you play a game that we have seen you play, certainly in big games this year, you'll have an opportunity. 